Here is your ultimate guide for how to practice the piano with the metronome. Today I'm going to cover the ins and outs of how to practice the piano with the metronome. And be sure to stick around to the end because I also address some very common problems like not being able to stay with the metronome when you're playing or rushing ahead of the metronome when you're playing. All right, so let's go. What is a metronome? A metronome is basically just a device that musicians use to help them keep a steady beat. There's a lot of different types of metronomes. It can be one that sits on top of your piano, it could be one that's attached to your keyboard, or it could even be one that is an app on your smartphone. But why should we really even use a metronome? As I said, it helps you keep a steady beat. If your song is not steady when you're playing or performing, it immediately doesn't sound good. It immediately sounds amateur. So imagine going to a concert and everyone's clapping along to the song and then the performer can't keep a steady beat. The whole audience would be like, it would be terrible. Keeping a steady beat is really, really important because it just takes you from sounding amateur to sounding more professional. I've also found that it helps you develop muscle memory. So one thing you can do is practice along with the metronome, little parts of a song that you find challenging, it can help you learn it a little bit faster. I found that it helps me clean up really challenging parts of a song. If I slow down the metronome, focus on say those two little measures, and I'm able to clean it up so much faster. So overall, it really just leads to a more polished performance. So let's get started with the metronome. And if you follow along with my recommended practice routine, I always say to warm up first. So let's demonstrate some warm ups with the metronome. We're gonna start with some simple exercises, for example, just playing some scales. I'm gonna show you exactly how to use the metronome as if you were a student who is advancing over time with their scales. Okay, so let's call this level one with just five finger scales using the metronome. I'm using the Soundbrenner app as my metronome. I'm gonna move mine up to 70, and I'm gonna show you the five finger scale. And I'm just gonna stay with the click. I would say that that is a good place to start if you're a total beginner and you wanna stay with the metronome. So now let's go to level two. Let's say you know your scales a little bit better. Let's stay with the click at 70 and do a full octave scale. Now level three, we're gonna go a little bit faster and we're gonna play the scale on eighth notes. That means it's two sounds or two notes per click. So I'm gonna slow down the metronome a little bit, down to 60 since I'm going a little faster with my scale. And you can think one and two and three and. All right, so that would be level three. Now, some musicians go crazy with that click. So you can imagine if you were practicing scales for a long time, you would be clicking away, losing your mind. So I actually have this watch that will just vibrate for me so I don't have to listen to that click the whole time. So I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm gonna cut off the click on my metronome and I'm just gonna use the vibration of my watch so I don't lose my mind. Level four would be two octave scales with eighth notes. And for teaching purposes, I am going to turn the click back on, but one cool thing is I can actually have the click going and the vibration going at the same time to really nail it in if you're having trouble keeping a steady beat with the metronome. So here's an example of using the metronome with two octaves to the eighth note. Level five is gonna be two octave scales to the 16th note. So that means there's gonna be four sounds on one beat. 
So what you can think is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, okay? Level six is gonna be three or four octaves with eighth notes. So that's gonna be two sounds on a beat, but you're gonna have more octaves. And then the last level, number seven, is going to be four octaves with 16th notes. And over time, you're gonna keep bumping up that tempo. After watching all seven levels, which level are you at with your scales? Let me know in the comments. The second part of a good practice session is then practicing your songs. So here's how to practice the metronome with songs. First, this is very important. I recommend learning the song very well before you incorporate the metronome. So if you don't know the song very well and you add the metronome, you're just gonna get very frustrated trying to read the notes and also trying to keep a steady beat at the same time. So don't do that. Learn the song extremely well then add the metronome as a way to polish it. After that, you need to determine its tempo. If you have no idea, you could listen to the song or sometimes it is written in the sheet music. So one thing you can do is just tap the tempo on your watch here, your sound brenner, and that will also help you just find the right tempo for the metronome. Again, so once you're familiar with your song, now we're gonna add the metronome. Start by setting the metronome a good bit slower than the actual song. This slower tempo is gonna help you focus on accuracy and it's gonna help you play very cleanly. This would be a good time to use the sound brenner with the vibration and the click to really nail it in. So I'm gonna demonstrate that with Golden Hour. So I'm gonna go really slow. This is a lot slower than the actual song. And as you become more comfortable, we're gonna bump up that speed. It depends on how comfortable you are with the song. You could bump it up a little bit over time or you could bump it up a lot. Do what feels right for you. Continue practicing a little bit faster and a little bit faster over time until you reach the actual tempo of the song. And I always say this advice, be sure to break down practicing a song into small chunks. So for example, you might just practice the verse or even one line with the metronome. Don't try to tackle the entire song from beginning to end over and over. That's very, very, very unproductive. Okay, common metronome problems. Let's say you're struggling to stay with the metronome period. What this means is you probably don't know the song that well and you need to go back and learn it extremely well. Remember, using the metronome is for the polishing phase. So go back, learn the notes, be able to play it at a decently steady beat on your own. Then you're gonna go back and add the metronome. Another thing you could do is subdivide. So for example, if you were practicing golden hour and you were playing on the quarter note, you could go in and change it to being on eighth notes, which is what I'm playing in golden hour. So for example, without the subdivision, it's like this. But with the subdivision, it is like this. That way I can really hear it every single beat. And again, if you're struggling to stay with the metronome, you might be interested in this watch because again, you can feel it vibrating on your arm and clicking if you want it at the same time. Another common problem is your tendency to rush ahead of the metronome. So maybe you actually do know the song really well and you're just kind of not paying attention to the metronome. First, just be mindful of your tendency to rush. I recommend to practice again with subdivisions. That way you're really nailing in the pulse of the song. And again, you're just gonna have to back up and slow it down. And then you're gonna circle spots in your music with a pencil if you have a tendency to rush in certain places. So remind yourself as you're practicing, oh, I tend to rush the chorus. That can kind of keep you aware. So when the metronome's going, you kind of get a little bit more aware when you're at that part. If you find yourself rushing, try to stop immediately because the more you practice rushing, the more you are 
ingraining yourself in that habit. The truth is that practicing the metronome, especially at the beginning, it's gonna take some getting used to. So it's very important to maintain a very consistent practice routine. You could use a calendar, a planner, anything. Make sure you schedule in your practice before the week starts. Another cool thing I like about the Soundbrenner is that you can actually log your practice in it and it will remind you to practice. Remember that practice and patience are key to building any skills on the piano. Keep practicing and you will see improvement over time. By the way, don't forget to check out the link in the description below because you can get 20% off any Soundbrenner device. If this video helped you, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.